Hi there, you're watching Market Cafe on ET Now with me Shriyanti Singh and Snehisha and over the next one hour we take you through news and updates from within the country as well as across the globe tell you which stocks you should keep on your radar and tell you what the brokers are saying as well but first things first Snehi, we've got to take a look at the US market. Absolutely, you know, because you have yet another record high coming in um, for the Dow and it's looking very good, in fact, for the US markets right now for the past couple of days. In fact, the US stock futures have also hovered near the flat line yesterday evening after the Dow uh, closed at a record for the second time this week. Now, during regular trading Wednesday, uh, the blue chip Dow advanced eight tenths of a percent the s p 500 also rose roughly half a percent and you had the nasdaq that also added three tenths of a percent so overall it was a winning day across indices for Wall Street. Now, aluminium producer Alcoa jumped nearly 6% in extended trading after posting adjusted earnings that topped expectations. Transport stock CSX, however, fell almost 4% on disappointing results. Morgan Stanley stock was also up 6.5% on the back of good earnings and we'll tell you more about these earnings um, in detail later in the show as well. Now, corporate earnings are set to continue with insurance company Travelers, Alternative Asset Manager Blackstone and health insurer Elevens Health slated to report numbers this morning and regional banks Key Corp, m and Bank as well as Truist Financial are also on the deck. But on the economic front, traders will be looking towards weekly jobless claims and September's retail sales uh, due uh, uh, today and industrial and manufacturing production data are also due uh, over the course of the trading day today. So lots to watch out for, in fact, when it comes to Wall Street today, when it comes to the US markets in terms of all of these macroeconomic indicators. Hi there, welcome back. Still watching Market Cafe on ET Now. Let's take a look at how the Asian markets are shaping up this morning and looking largely good for the Asian markets except for Nikkei. Nikkei seems to be under pressure right now. But let's uh, understand why this is happening because investors in Asia will assess trade session out of Japan in the morning and job numbers of Australia as well. Now, Japan's Nikkei slipped six tenths of a percent in early trade. You had topics also that was largely unchanged. And Japan's exports fell 1.7 percent in September compared to the same period last Last year, surprising economists polled by Reuters who had expected, in fact, a half a percent growth. On the back of this, uh, you have Nikkei that's down half a percent and it's the first time that exports have contracted this year and was sh down sharply from a revised growth rate of 5.5% in August. But that's why Nikkei is under pressure. Let's shift focus talk about why Australia is doing well right now. A 7 tenths of a percent uptick coming in a 60 point gain on that index and Australia's unemployment rate for September is in at 4.1 percent, slightly down from a Reuters poll that expected it to remain unchanged from August at 4.2 percent. So that's looking good for Australia this morning. Let's also shift focus, take a look at what the Korean market is up to. Kospi also in fact accompanying Nikkei in the red, just um, 2 tenths of a percent cut coming in 3 points lower. So not much to worry about, rather very flat is where Cosby is right now. Lastly, let's just focus, take a look at what Hang Seng and Shanghai are up to this morning. Hang Seng on to a very strong start this morning, a 400 point gap up coming in on that index, 2% higher. Shanghai also doing pretty well for itself, 8 tenths of a percent higher is where Shanghai is. So other than Cosby, which is rather flat, and Nikkei that looks to be under pressure, you have the Asian markets that are holding up uh, fairly uh, well right now. But if you take a look at the implied open this morning, uh, we managed to uh, shut shop yesterday around that 24,971 mark. Uh, significantly up under 25,000. If you take a look at the implied open right now, 25,030, at least on a spot basis, we'd expect it to open higher than where we closed yesterday. And uh, it's a rather flat start nonetheless, but one above 25,000. So let's see if we're able to hold on to those levels because over the course of the week, even when we've had a gap up opening of 25,200, we've closed below the 25,000 level. So that's seeing some resistance that level right now. Let's see if we're able to scale onto that 25,000 mark today. Well, absolutely. Let's see how that pans out for us. But we have a power pack lineup for you on the market at 9.20. We'd be discussing the markets with Mihi Vora, CIO, Trust, MF. And to discuss the growth roadmap of NMDC, we'd be in conversation with Amitabh Mukherjee, the CMD of the company. At 9.30 as well, 9.40, we have a conversation lined up with Amit Chadha, MD and CEO at l &T Tech Services to discuss their earnings as well. And to decode the earnings of emphasis at 9.50, we'd be in conversation with Nitin Rakesh, the top boss of the company as well as Arvind Vishwanathan, the CFO of the company as well. Earnings will also be discussed with Aadhaar Housing Finance, the management, Rishi Anand, the MD and CEO will be discussing all of that at 10 a.m. So keep an eye on all of those power pack conversations lined up for you on the market.
Well, lots of conversations to keep a close eye on today. Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying tuned in. Well, let's get to some more news and updates then. In India's trade deficit is something that narrowed to $20.78 billion in September, hitting its five-month low. Now, this was mainly driven by a rise in merchandise exports in the previous year. But when you take a look at the sequential basis for this, exports have declined. And imports as well, when you take a look at them, have hit their lowest since May because of softer demand. So that at least is the roundup when it comes to the September trade deficit, Sneha. All right, well, let's just focus and talk about um, a space that has been seeing a lot of uh, buzz recently, and that's the entire aviation space on the back of the bomb threats that we've been seeing. Aviation Minister Ram Mohan Naidu says that the ministry is keeping an eye on hoax bomb threats. Meanwhile, the Mumbai police has arrested a minor accused of threatening at least three airlines. Let's go across to my colleague Samir Dixit for more details on this. Samir. The government is deeply concerned with the series of bomb threats that the Indian airlines have been receiving in the recent past, and the same is reflected through Ram Mohan Naidu, the aviation minister's official statement. He mentioned that, yes, the government is concerned, and that is the reason that he chaired a very important high-level meeting on 14th of October with the stakeholders that included officials from CISF, BCAS, Ministry, and DGCA. And government is actually looking and uh, hearing from airlines that what all remedies could be taken. But if you see, Mumbai police has arrested a minor who has sent such a bomb threat on social media and which disrupted the flight operation of three different airlines. Even in Delhi, six cases have been registered by Delhi police. Largely, if you see, there have been more than 12 flights which have been disrupted because of such bomb threats, which lately have been found Hoax calls, which lately has been found that these are completely false security alarm, and this disrupted the flight operations and even causing a great discomfort to passengers and also a great loss, a revenue loss to the airlines. And that is the reason that the government has said that they are looking into all the aspects so as to ensure that these cases are minimized and also the security operations, the safety aspect is upheld. So what we are also picking up from our sources that... Uh, Another high-level meeting is likely to take place on Thursday and government may announce some big steps in coming days. People who are making this prank call must be dealt with very, very sternly. Airline suggestion of only putting them on the no-fly list is really no solution to it. There should be much harsher punishment. And Air India had in fact hinted that we would like to recover the cost from the people who have made the flight to divert. Now, that is something that we need, a very, very stern action. All right, well, let's just focus and talk about uh, an IPO that had got the market very excited, and that is the Hyundai India IPO. It saw 42% subscription on day two. The retail portion was subscribed 38%, while NII subscribed 26% uh, in India's largest ever IPO. Remember, today is the last day of subscription. Let's just take a look at a little bit of what this subscription looks like. Uh, at the end of day two, you have Q QIBs at 0.58 times, NII 0.26. Total, in fact, has come in at 0 0.42, just below that half uh, mark also for the IPO. This is an IPO, remember, that had got everybody very excited, but now is struggling to see 100% subscription as well. And just a little bit about the IPO, it's a 27,870 crore rupee IPO from the 15th to 17th of October. So today is the last day. Uh, price range between 1,865 and 1,960 and listing date on the 22nd of this month. Let's also talk about some uh, anchored uh, investors that have invested into this IPO. You have Government of Singapore, Fidelity, Vanguard Investment, BlackRock, JP Morgan, ADIA, Society General as well as Goldman Sachs. Let's just understand some of the key strengths of this IPO. IPO coming in, you, it's the second largest in the PV market. It's got a high margin SUV drive sales, good mix of higher margin exports as well. And they're all set to launch four new EV models as well. But here are some key risks that could be weighing on the subscription that this IPO is seeing. It's a pure offer for sale IPO. The parent company is looking to make an exit. Only 20% discount to Maruti's FY26 price to earnings is where this IPO is valued at currently. And there's a rise in related party transactions as well and the parent company holds 34% stake 
in Kia, Kia Motors also something that is strongly uh, giving a strong competition in fact to the Hyundai Motors brand but well yes this is what the IPO subscription is faring to be today is the last to subscribe so let's see how this goes today. Well, absolutely. This is the mega IPO that we've been looking at very closely. But moving on, then the group of ministers on GST compensation says under Minister of State for Finance Pankaj Chaudhary met yesterday and discussed the merger of compensation says into GST. Now, in the meeting, state suggested that during the transition of says, once once it is decided to merge with taxes, no new goods should be added to the list of luxury, sin and demerit goods. Itina Sumit Chaturvedi then joins in with all of those important details. Sumit, tell us a little more about this then. The first meeting of a group of ministers or composition says will took place in New Delhi. Uh, it was headed by MOS Finance Pankaj Chaudhary during the meeting. It was discussed uh, that the composition says could be subsumed with the taxes later on, GST taxes later on. However, states were of the views that after that, no new items should be added to sin tax or luxury goods. That was the overall discussion. Meeting went on for one to two hours. If you talk about the discussions, these were the discussions that happened. It was attended by four to five a minister of uh, ministers from the states as far as finance is concerned and minister of state for finance panka chaudhry a new, now another meeting will happen next month and then certain things could come out so meetings could have had two options first to subsume uh, the taxes and uh, or to or to later on take it further however the discussions happen and no decision has been taken so far on this all right, Sumit, thanks so much for taking us through all of those details. On that note, it's time for a breather on Market Cafe right now. We'll take you through more stock-specific news and action on the other side of this break. Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying tuned in. Well, let's get you the futures and options roundup then. Anansh is standing by with just that. Right. So let's start with what FIS did in index future. So in previous session, they continued to uh, cover their long contract by around 8,500 contract. They've added some short as well by around 1,800 contract. So net to net, we are seeing addition of around 10,000 contract on downside. Now due to this, the total long position has inched lower from that 34.7% to 33.5%. And this is the 89 session low. This indicates that FI continue to be very strongly bearish in the market. Now if you talk about Nifty, then if you can see the chart, Nifty has been hovering around that 50 DMA from last 9-10 consecutive session, indicating uh, a sideways trend building up in the market. Also, if you talk about uh, option front, then uh, we are seeing call writing happening at that psychological mark of 25,000, indicating very strong resistance around this level. Whereas on downside, we can see some support around 24,800 because that's the most active put writing strike. Now, due to this, we are seeing that PCR is 0.4, indicating there's very heavy call writing happening at higher strike indicating option traders are getting very bearish that market won't go up now this is also a positive sign because if we see any spike in the market on upside then they'll be forced to cover their position giving a support to the market on upside now if you talk about nifty bank then today we are seeing that nifty bank in the previous session has sustained about that 50 dma for second consecutive session which is a positive sign it's like nifty bank is waiting for nifty to catch up on upside if you talk about index options then we are seeing some mild call writing happening at 50 2000 mark indicating some resistance around this level also today we have nifty weekly option expiry so we may see some good volatility in the market now talking about few fno stocks we are seeing significant long build-up happening in hdfc amc hpcl and debug nitrite whereas a short build-up happening in zydus life coforge and dr lalpath so keep an eye on the stocks Okay, Ansh, thank you so much for taking us through all the levels that we can expect to watch out for in today's trade, given in fact today is the weekly expiry on the Nifty. So those are the levels that you should be spotting for Nifty and Nifty Bank as well. But let's get a little stock specific now and shift focus to some stocks that could be big buzzers in today's trade. And my colleague Ria is joining in with a list of just that. Good morning, Ria. Yes, good morning. So let's take a look at the stocks that are going to be in focus today. First up, we have GMR Airports Infra uh, reporting their monthly traffic data. Now, they have handled more than 10.2 million passengers across all airports, which is up 9% over the previous year. The domestic uh, traffic has gone up around 7.5% and the international traffic has gone up around 12.2% on a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, they have also handled the highest ever passenger traffic in H1 of FI25, crossing 63 million passengers. Uh, let's also shift focus to Ultratech Cement, uh, which has announced 
allows the commissioning of an additional 1.2 MTPA capacity at its existing unit which is situated in Tamil Nadu. So we are keeping an eye out on that on the back of that news. Uh, we also have Obroy Realty in focus since uh, the board of directors has approved uh, the issuance of NCDs for an aggregate amount of up to rupees uh, 1500 crores on a private placement basis. Uh, we also have two uh, railway stocks in focus today. The first one is RVNL which has emerged as the uh, lowest bidder for the Maharashtra Metro uh, Rail Corporation Limited uh, for an order worth rupees 270 crores. And lastly, we also have Rail Tel Corporation in focus since they have received a work order from the Controller General of Defence accounts for an NOC SOC solution amounting to uh, rupees 21.64 crores. And they've also received two other work orders for rupees 51 and a half crores and uh, rupees 14.2 crores. So we're keeping an eye on all of these stocks today. Well, absolutely. We'll be keeping an eye on all of those counters in today's trading session. But moving on, then Wipro is all set to report its Q2 numbers. Now, wage impact is likely to weigh on margins slightly. While when you take a look at the revenue, the kind of expectation that we have is that it's li largely likely to remain flat. We do have Anisha Jain who's standing by with an update on what exactly the street is penciling in. Well, from Wipro, we are expecting it is going to be a flattish performance this time around. So the constant currency growth is expected to be flat in middle of the range that they had earlier guided. So minus one to plus one was uh, the kind of guidance they had given for Q2. We are expecting it to come in the middle of the range. Overall, there's expectation of improvement in margins. So 16.6% is what we are penciling in. And that would mean a profitability of around 3,050 crore. In terms of the top line, while financial services has done well, there is a bit of a slowdown when it comes to manufacturing and energy. That will play its part as far as growth is concerned. Margins might see a bit of an impact of the one-month wage hikes and that's why the growth might be limited. And overall, in terms of deal wins, we are expecting it's going to be closer to $1 to $1.5 billion. At least that's what Quota uh, Unit Securities has to say. Overall, in terms of guidance for the next quarter, Street is working with an assumption of minus 1 to plus 1%. Okay, Anisha, thanks so much for taking us through what we can expect from Wipro, uh, Wipro's numbers. But uh, moving on, also tell us what we can expect from the another IT major uh, who's coming out with its numbers today and that is Infosys. So tell us what the street is expecting and what's the factors that we should be watching out for today. Well, overall, it's expected to be a good quarter from Infosys. In fact, we are expecting a guidance upgrade to come by. So that could be the big highlight for the quarter. But in terms of the numbers, we are expecting the constant currency growth to be around 3%. Dollar revenue is expected to shoot up by 3.3%. And hence, the rupee revenue is expected to be closer to 40,900 crore. So that there's a growth of around 4%. The margin is also expected to show a bit of a bump up so that operating leverage will kick in. And that's why a 20 basis point improvement to 21.3%. Profitability as a result of all of that is expected to jump up by 5%. A number of 6,700 crores is what we are expecting. Um, there is going to be an impact of the um, Intech acquisition and that's why a percentage point could be added in terms of revenue from that. EBIT margin, as I talked about, will be benefited by higher utilization rates, better productivity. There's going to be no wage hike impacts. All of that auger wells for the operating performance. Um, also, in terms of the deal wins, um, Kotak is expecting that the deal win will, close, will be closer to $3 billion, while City believes it could be higher at around $4 billion. So let's see which way it goes. But finally, on the guidance, um, they had earlier talked about a 3 to 4% growth. The street is now expecting that it could get bummed up to 4 to 5%. And on the margins, however, However, they are likely to continue with their guidance, which is around 20 to 22 percent. All right, so there you go. Those are the expectations, at least when it comes to Infosys. But private lender Axis Bank is also set to report its Q2 results. Gaurav is standing by with an update on what really the street is penciling in. Gaurav, what do the expectations look like for this one then? Well, yes, Axis Bank is set to come up with their Q2 results and when we talk about numbers, now analysts are expecting net interest income to remain a little muted and the reason being that when we talk about cost of deposit, they are, ex they are expecting this to rise even in this quarter and that is the reason why we may see just 1% growth on a sequential basis in net interest income. Now, pre-provisional operating profit will follow the same trend, we may see a muted growth there as well but when it comes to profitability, we may see provisions going down a little because let's not forget that in the last quarter we have seen that there was a negative surprise which came from the bank's unsecured lending and that is why provisions were high. So in this quarter, analysts are expecting provisions to go down and that may support bad growth of around 5% on a sequential basis. When it comes to loan book, now they are not expecting any kind of negative surprise like last quarter. Last quarter we saw deposits actually degree almost by 1% but in this quarter they are expecting advances as well as deposits to grow almost by 3% on a sequential basis. 
which will lead to around 14% growth on a YY basis in terms of deposits and 12% growth on a YY basis in terms of advances. When it comes to commentary, now what they are expecting is that any kind of commentary on the asset quality is going to be crucial for Axis Bank because just like, like I said, in the last quarter we have seen uh, unsecured lending being a little bit of problem for the bank. But apart from that, any kind of commentary on the margin recovery, any kind of commentary on net interest margins because now analysts are also expecting net interest margin to go below 4% mark which had been there for the bank for the last last few quarters so there also any kind of commentary is very important and lastly any kind of commentary on the unsecured segment and co credit cost normalization is also going to be something that people will be watching for so definitely watching out on how the numbers pan out and how the commentary pans out for Axis Bank. Thanks for taking us through what to expect from Axis Bank. Uh, stay on with us because we'll be coming back to you for what the brokerages are flagging off in just a minute. But before we do, do that, let's talk about the fourth and the final Nifty company that's going to be coming out with its numbers today and that is Nestle India. Now on a standalone basis, revenue is seen at 5,294 crore rupees compared to 5036.8 crores which is up 5 odd percent on a year on year basis ebitda is seen at 1258 crores which is an uptick of 2.7 percent year on year however some pressure could be seen building on the pad figure due to one offs and exceptional items weighing on the pad this time around pad is seen at 852 crores compared to 908 crores this time last year which is down 6 odd percent. EBITDA margins also seem to be slightly under pressure this time coming in at 23.7% compared to 24.3% on a year-on-year -year basis. Now here are some key expectations. Volume growth is expected to be at 3% year-on-year. Exceptional items are expected to weigh on PAT. However, the adjusted PAT figure is expected to grow by 6 to 7% on a year-on-year -year basis. Inflation in coffee and cocoa prices are expected to weigh on margins this time around. However, the price hikes taken by the company in the chocolates, coffee and milk product segment is expected to aid the top line as well. Here are some important factors to watch out for in uh, today's numbers. Volume growth and demand trends will be key to watch out for. The raw material scenario will be important on the back of the cocoa and coffee price hikes that we've seen. A pricing strategy of the company, the distribution expansion update as well as the management a commentary if any on demand outlook on rural versus urban segments will be very key to track today. So well yes, this is what we're expecting from Nestle's numbers today. Well, absolutely. Those are the expectations, at least when it comes to Nestle. But there's a host of counters that brokerages then are keeping on their radar. Gaurav, thank you for staying on with us. Tell us which are the counters that make it to brokerage radar then. Well, yes. Let's begin our list with Zydus Life. Yesterday, we saw the stock tank almost by 4%. And now, Macquarie has come up with their outperform rating and a target price of 1,365 rupees on this counter. Now, the reason why yesterday this stock tank was the patent case that they lost in USA. That was led by MSN, which is one of the partner company. Now, what Macquarie says, is that currently they are baking in the launch of this drug in FY27 and we may see a little bit of impact. The impact is uh, quantified in the terms of around $300 million in FY27 but still Macquarie believes that the target price of 1365 rupees is achievable for, for the stock. Up next we have is KI Industries because Jefferies has now maintained buy rating and hiked the target price to 5720 rupees. Now in this counter also we saw a huge fall yesterday and now what Jefferies is saying is that there was a weak quarter that we saw but apart from that management has maintained their FY25 guidance and they also believe that we may see a little bit of positive surprise coming up from the power segment from the company and lastly they say that the company is actually holistic play when it comes to power capex and exports and that is why they have actually retained their outperform rating and a target price of 5720 rupees lastly let's also focus on srf because UBS has now downgraded to sell rating and also cut the target price to 2100 rupees versus what it was at 2700 rupees. Now what they're saying is that there are prolonged time of difficulties for the company. There will be negative surprises which they believe will come in the company. They are expecting weak agrochemical demand because China uh, China demand is actually now, uh, uh, I mean China is gaining market share and lastly recovery hopes are fading as per UBS. So they are being a little bit of bearish um, on, uh, on SRF and definitely on back of all these notes we will be watching out on all these counters and how they perform in a day to day. Hi Gaurav, thanks for taking us through that and those are the, all the stocks that you should be watching out for in today's trade on the back of brokerage verdicts coming out but let's lastly should focus to the Hyundai IPO as we bid you goodbye on this edition of uh, Market um, uh, Cafe. Just um, a quick take on what the experts are making out of this IPO, whether you should be hitting the subscribe button and remember today is the last day to do so if you wish to do so. But here's an expert's take on what you should be doing when it comes to this Hyundai IPO. Consider maybe Tata Motors, m &M, and Maruti. So Tata Motors has a JLR as a leg which is the largest of the pie. And for m and it's largely the tractors and the, some of the parts which comes into play. 
So I think uh, we really don't have much of a choice when Hyundai can, is kind of a direct comparison to uh, Maruti. And some of the positives which stand apart from Hyundai vis-a-vis Maruti has been the higher share of SUV sales, the higher margins that they realize, and as well as you know the, the greater share of exports that they do. Hyundai is an option. You can you can see a good amount of shift happening from Sushil's side from maybe Maruti to Hyundai. Even they have a superior product slate, their margins, the return ratios are better. So I feel, you know, it, it is here for a good term and uh, it's, it's a decent issue to subscribe to. So I think it's a it's a decent uh, stock for a long term. No excitement, no, nothing immediate what we are seeing with IPO. So there's no compulsion to subscribe to an IPO. I would be happy if I get it a little cheaper uh, from current, let's say, 25, 26 times. Uh, but overall, I think a very steady company with the with realistic expectations if you have you may add in the portfolio. One good thing, however, is that it's probably the only player which is strong in each powertrain. So you have the IC platform. They are launching two CNG variants uh, this year. On EV, they already have two models, which is IMX and Kona. And they probably will come with Creta EV, which I think Creta has been one of the best-selling UVs. And if they can come up with an IC EV variant, that can give a bit of a fillet to the, to the numbers. With the capacity increase now in the pipeline, new EV models which are being planned, I think... If you look at the medium to long term, the issue issue continues to look, look attractive. But given the fact that it is coming at around, say, I think 25, 26 times trailing. So it's not a very cheap IPO. But I think for the investors who are ready to take, say, medium to long term viewpoint, they will, they will definitely end up making money. So- There comes a time when your heart calls for you to arise. Plant your feet solid into the ground. Decide your own limits. And then, break right through them. Become something more. It's my time to arise. Hyundai Motor India Limited now proposes an initial public offering of its equity shares. The 100% book built offer is being offered at a price band of Rs. 1,865 to Rs. 1,960 per equity share of face value of Rs. 10 each. The anchor investor offer period opens and closes on Monday, October 14th, 2024. Offer opens on Tuesday, October 15th, 2024. Offer closes on Thursday, October 17th. 2024. For risk involved and other details, please refer to the Red Herring Prospectus, which is available on the website of the company, SEBI, VRLMs and the stock exchanges.